and welcome to the American Woodshop. I'm Scott Phillips. And I'm Susie Phillips. And you know, she really likes to carve a lot, so do I. But today it's all about unusual carving details, like an architectural bracket or... Or a chainsaw carved bear. So don't go anywhere. This is a very unusual show. The American Woodshop with Scott Phillips is brought to you by... Woodcraft, since 1928 providing traditional and modern woodworking tools and supplies to generations of craftsmen. Woodcraft, helping you make wood work. Craig, from the first cut to the final assembly, providing woodworkers with products that help simplify woodworking challenges. Craig. Gorilla Glue, for the toughest jobs on planet Earth. For dry hands that crack and split. O'Keefe's Working Hands. Easy Wood Tools, American-made tools for all skill levels. You're sweet. Wait, you're a sweet potato. Check this <laughs> out. This is a carved sweet potato done by Dennis Possum Bixby, world famous, and it's me. Go figure. Possum, you're one in a million. Thanks for sending this to us. It was fun working with you on that project. Now on carving details, let's dig into it. You have choices. You can do traditional carving, or in this case, this rosette, a canthus leaf, front and back, was cut on a CNC. And we need to take this board right here, which we have, all set up in the machine. And I want you to, you got it? Mm -hmm. Follow me along the way. And once we get this started, we're off to carve a bear with a phenomenal carver, sculptor extraordinaire. But this carve right, I lower this down onto the board that's 9 by 18 and 7 eighths thick. That is now locked into place. And over here on the menu board, I just follow the prompts. And I want it to be the acanthus leaf. Press enter. Standard roller, yes. Measuring board, and it goes through prompts. And once it gets to the end of its cycle, it's ready to start carving. So to that end, we'll let it do its job and we'll come back and see this once this is done. Okay, now let's take a look at this. This is absolutely amazing to me. A good brass brush fine bristles is a good way to see exactly how magnificent that is. So what I'm going to do is flip this over to the other side and carve this side so it's three-dimensional. When that covers up, it turns the machine off. Bring this up, get it all set up, and while this gets done, let's head outside and carve a bear. Now take a look at my welcome bear out of walnut, sapwood accents on the welcome sign, and here's the man, Dale Lewis, chainsaw sculptor, who did it. Now seriously, can't thank you enough. Hey. You're one of the best I've ever seen with sculpting wood like this with chainsaws. Now let's dig right into it. What in the world is this thing? Well this is a new uh, a cutter, it's from Germany, has two uh, uh, wheels on here has uh, four carbide cutters on it and you can use a lot of uh, sculpting and sculpture that you can't ordinarily do with, with a saw. You can really remove the material, gets it off there fast. And this is called, from the inventor? It's called uh, Harry Kane, okay. That's the guy that makes it. Excellent. So then this one is intriguing. I've been around chainsaws all my life and that is a weird bar on there. What is that? Well this is a uh, actually a cannon. Uh, car carver's bar, and it's what they call the size of, of a dime. That means that the uh, tip of the bar is a dime. They use a dime tip and a quarter tip. And this was actually an eight inch. Uh, they went from, from eight, 10, 12, 14, and 18. Okay, so that leads. This is a uh, saw right off the shelf. It's got a 12 inch bar on it, okay. uh, right off the shelf. And then you have Standard. another that you use. And, and this is uh, another one. This is a 16 inch. This one's a little bit different in the sense that you see it doesn't have a sprocket on the end. Most of them do. Right. They say with uh, if you're going to do a lot of plunge cutting in that, it's better to not have a sprocket. So. Okay. Now what he's talking about on the very end, there's a sprocket in here that these teeth roll around, whereas this is just a smooth groove that that floats Pardon. in. Pardon. Pardon. So that plunge cuts when you're going straight in. So those are your primary tools. Now, 
We'll get it shaped into form, but up here, Dale, come on up here. Tell us how you dog your workpiece down. Solid walnut. Yeah, I attached a small uh, piece of plywood to the base with two screws. Then I attached two screws into the base to kind of stabilize it. There's okay. nothing worse than trying to hold it with your foot or your hand and saw with the other hand. So. Yeah, and you got to be careful of kickback. So yeah. watch his technique here with the chainsaw today. Full safety gear. I'll get my gear on. And if you could fire it up and start to form this, that'd be great. Okay, Thank great. you. Okay, now here's the deal. I need to know what you're thinking so that people can understand how you approach your work, Dale. Okay. So what have you done so far? Well, first I just uh, kind of a little bit oriented the head, got the back part and cut a little bit off on the sides. And the snout's coming up here. Yeah. And you want some of that lighter colored sapwood on the end there. Mm -hmm. Okay, onward! Okay, now you got it all barked off, and we're down to good wood, and I'm going to spin this around so everybody can see that my bear's got a tail. Yeah. That's brilliant planning on your part. How do you do that? How do you see what's in the wood to plant all this? Well, you got to kind of know the uh, anatomy of whatever you're carving helps. Right. And then uh, use your proportions and uh, just kind of start laying it out. Well, and here's the deal. This is critical. The pass through for the feet, and this is blocked up about seven inches. And you roll that around, and that comes all the way through. You can see the base of his paws coming out here. So he's created a shelf for that to stand on. Well, the bear's shaping up nicely. I'll let you keep at it. Okay, great. Looking good. Oh, now this is the fun tool right here. Again, this is the dime, uh, the dime shaped point or blade. Okay, so the idea on this is that it gets into the tight spots. You use this for lettering and detailing. Okay. Yeah, you always want to lose, run with your chain loose. You never want to have it tight. Otherwise, it's going to wear out your bar and also wear out your chain. So you want it to be, you can actually see a couple of lengths at the bottom. Okay, but well oiled. You got yep. to keep it lubricated. So we're all set. What I love is this new texture that starts showing up with that carbide cutter tool. And then from here, what other tools are you going to use? A uh, power wire brush and a die grinder. Okay, power wire inside with electricity. Uh -huh. Okay, let's go get set up. Okay. We're inside and we're ready to do some power sculpting. What is this? It's called a die grinder. It's got a uh, saber tooth uh, burr on okay. it. And it looks like it self cleans pretty nicely. And yeah, this is the, uh, the rough. Okay. They also have the fine, but this is the rough one. Okay, let's see it. It's the details on the eyes now. Okay. That's looking pretty good. So I noticed your technique you're working with the rotation of that cutter, so you're feathering it into the rotation. Right. That gives you a, a better controlled removal. And then you burn that point straight in to make the eye. So, Two, yeah, 
pupil. Very nice. And then that's the details on the snout. Looks really good. What's next? Uh, we're going to do these uh, claws and uh, touch up a little bit on the letters and then these toes. By Jove, I think you've called it. <laughs> <laughs> you have a real gift here. And what are the other tools that you use to finish this off? Well, sometimes I'll use this. This is an, kind of an eye tool. You can kind of bring it in there and actually round the eye a little bit more. Uh, this is the largest size I got. Uh, so I think the way they cleaned up, I'm not going to use it this time. Right. It so looks perfect. It kind of burns it. Now I'm going to use a power wire brush. <laughs> Okay. Just go over all the surface, uh, take some of the frizzies off, and take some sharp edges off. Okay, I'll get out of your way. Looking great. Now, Dale, it's looking great. It's ready to bring out a little bit of its character. I'm not going to brush this on the sapwood. This is a natural seven year one time finish that when this soaks in that walnut's really going to be pronounced. But there again I use the clear on the sapwood because you take pains to use that to accent this bear. So I'll brush this out and the nice thing about this it's bulletproof stuff. You know it really is good and you've done a fabulous job with this. So, you teach classes how many times a year around the country? Well, uh, just three right now that's actually scheduled, uh, but sometimes I'll have people just call me and want a special class. Session? But okay. Well, I guarantee you one thing, you're one of the finest sculptors I've ever worked with. Well, thank you. And from start to finish, he's got a total of just a bit more than an hour in this bear, and I think you'll agree it's a masterpiece speaks to me. You're a genuine American master. Thanks. So good to work with you. Thanks for sharing your skills today. Thank you. Our pleasure. My goodness. Susie's going to love this. Now back to the trim project here. So we have the acanthus leaf laid out in the middle. Is that what you had in mind, Susie? It is. I love it. I think it turned out really well and I didn't have to carve it. The carver right <laughs> did all the work. A lot of carving this season <laughs> on the wood shop, so the carver right helped us here. But anyways, if you look at this bracket, that came from a Victorian home. It was under a soffit. I blew it up to fit a board, cut it out with scissors, and then used temporary bond spray adhesive so that we could lay that out on a piece of mahogany, 7 eighths inch thick, 18 inches long, and 9 inches wide. And now what I'm doing is removing pieces to scroll the outside edge. And to that end, this is all 100% a scroll saw project now on the outside edge. So that's a number 7 blade. I bring this down and bring this forward, release the tension here, make sure that the blade is seated all the way up into the jaws of the chuck before I tighten the key down. Let me get that, just like that. And when that's tight, I toggle it back. And this is key right here. Listen to the blade. It needs to be a little bit tighter. That's good. If you don't have it tight enough, you can't make the proper cuts. Now what I can do is use the flat of the blade. The number seven has flats on each side. Bring it up to the edge that's already been started push it against the flat, and then continue the cut. This is a puffer that really helps to follow the layout line of this circle. So I'll bring that on around. And that's all good right there. And I'm actually using the side of the blade now like a rudder on a ship. And I hope you can really see what that blade is doing. I'm leaving the line. And by leaving the line, if I need to, I can always sand down to it. Now the control is always down to the table. If you're having trouble with control, you either don't have the right blade enough tension or you aren't holding it securely to the tabletop. And every scroll saw blade has a personality. If you 
get comfortable with the blade and I'm starting to understand the way the set of the teeth are working on this number seven, you can move mountains here. So look at that corner I'm coming up to. Instead of trying to do a wicked tight turn, I go into the scrap and swing this around and that's in the waist area and I can come to that sharp point just like that. Now I'll turn that off and that's my technique, release that. That looks great and then it pops right out. Right out if the blade's square, and it is, to the table. So now I'll pierce this through. Now that's some techniques on my end. Susie, I'll get you ready to roll and we want to see some of your techniques. Everybody has a different touch with a scroll saw. Uh, the main thing is take your time, make sure you put good tension on the blade. Need to release that so I get more purchase on the top of the blade. Tighten her down, tension it properly. Okay, now give us some good tips, Susie. All righty. Okay, got everything all set and just take your time and follow your pattern and always keep just either follow the line or just on the outside of the line like Scott said so you can um, you can always sand back but you can't you can't put back the wood if you take it away keep firm pressure on the table and you're in business and just keep on going and I'll just follow the line and use the side of that blade and just keep turning and going and just just let it take the sawdust away for me and that's my guide and you just keep going and follow your pattern. It's really pretty easy and it's scroll socks really scroll saw is really a lot of fun. So I'll just keep on going here, making my turns, taking my time. And in no time at all we'll be all set. See what the project looks like. Okay, I'm almost out of here and we'll have all the outside cuts done, it'll be time to do all the inside piercing cuts. Okay, all right. Turn this off. Okay. And here you go. Now, check this out. Look at that edge. There's no burning, there's no sanding, and there's no fuzz out on the bottom because there are reverse teeth that actually on the upstroke clean the fuzz off of this. So, no sanding to be done. So that's the outside shape. This right angle is perfect for the bracket. Now we have to create pierce cuts through here to finish that scroll, and also here, 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 and here, and there. So we've got a total of six areas that we need to drill all the way through. Oh, got to set that up for the drill mode right there. I've pierced the blade through the pilot hole now and we're going to waste away this area right in here and scroll into the carved edge of the acanthus leaf. And there's always a good way to approach your work. What I want to do is be very careful with these delicate details. This is a thick piece of wood and I don't want to break out any of the parts. Now when I come up to the top of this leaf, I've got a line drawn down to where I'm going to scroll into the edge of the carved pattern. Okay, so when I come into those sharp points now, I can pivot on the back of the blade and scroll in those carved leaf details. And this is a perfect way to come up with a carved rosette accent when your custom carver in your wood shop goes on break. Okay, so here we go. We'll just scroll this right on out. And you want to scroll the leaf accent out in the center of the circle first before you scroll the rest because this is a very delicate detail. Don't be afraid to use the side of the blade like a rudder on a ship. And you can see how my hands just swing this right on around. It's a dance. 
surface is looking really good. And then when I come around to this point, this is where I have to swing up to the circle and leave enough wood to hold the points of the acanthus leaf. Right, it'll be held by those four points. It's gonna look really good, Scott. You don't want to max out the blade. Let's swing it all the way around to the beginning. Turn that off. Release this. Hold that up. And you can see that pops right out. Now I'll do these three other areas. Looking good. Yes, it is. It's fun. Watch my arms. I'm not doing the chicken. I don't have my elbows up. I'm, I've got my elbows down to my side. It gives me more control and then light finger pressure down to the table is the way that you get your best work. So all this area now is done and the rosette floats up. Okay, but we still have to cut away this area on the inside. I'll just tear that apart. Okay. Mess you up at all. All right, so onward here. All right, there you go. When I come into tight spots like this curve where it comes down to a real sharp point, I establish one side of the cut, I back out, and I go into the scrap that will be wasted away, and then I come around and I establish the flat of the blade on the pattern and I can come right in and make that a super tight point like that. And then I can go back into the waist, spin this around, reestablish that cut, and finish this spiral out. The biggest thing is keep it moving. That's the neat thing about a scroll saw. You can cut any shape you want. Oh, you can do a lot. You really can. Okay, let's take a look. All right. We have all the scroll cuts Got made it. now. And that pops right out, like so. Take this off. Okay, that's just the right amount of adhesive on there. Let it dry first for a bit. And that comes out of there. And go. now we have to go over to the workbench to put a couple trim pieces on it. Susie, time for your personal touch here. All Add right. some details here. Just doing a little carving and just using a chip carving knife. And it's just some simple two chip cuts pretty much. And just get in here, I wanna make this just a little bit deeper. And then we get the finish on it, it's really gonna make it pop. It's gonna look really great. Just right in there, just widen that just a little bit. Okay, now let me get show those them. chips out. Okay, now here's how the rest of this goes. To hang the sign, first I need to add the trim pieces. I'm using a handheld router to profile the edges of two trim work pieces. It has a ball bearing guide and it rounds over that to a 3 8 radius and it has a shoulder on each side. Very elegant look. Once that's routed, then I take that work piece, router profile down, and I do a vertical bevel cut on the ends at a 45 degree angle. That way I can mate those two corners together of the two mated work pieces and that creates a nice frame that I can then screw on to the bracket work piece that we've been working on and that makes it strong. Once that's done, it's time to put the garnet shellac on it. Handmade, has great color, and I just have Susie brush that on with the grain. It's a wood filler for mahogany, so it's beautiful. And once it's finished, then we fasten the eye screws, and then we can hook the chain that will hang the sign onto the eye screws, and it's off to the races. Well, there you have it. An architectural trim bracket, beautifully carved, rosette, in the American Wood Shop, also done with the carve right. So that's beautiful. Turned out great. Yes, it did. And, and I love the bear. He is <laughs> fabulous. Dale, thank you. Great Absolutely. job. Now off to the new bear home. All right. Okay, right at home here at the American Woodshop. Welcome. 
That looks fantastic. On top of a cedar post, that will be joined on there with heavy-duty outdoor screws. And that is a great way to cap the American wood shop. So now that's it for this week. On to antique trestle tables next week with through tenants. Great stuff. Stay well and get busy in your shop. Thanks for being with us. Man, Barry, you look at home. Looking good. Woodcraft, since 1928, providing traditional and modern woodworking tools and supplies to generations of craftsmen. Woodcraft, helping you make wood work. Craig, from the first cut to the final assembly, providing woodworkers with products that help simplify woodworking challenges. Craig. Gorilla Glue, for the toughest jobs on planet Earth. For dry hands that crack and split, O'Keefe's Working Hands. Easy Wood Tools, American-made tools for all skill levels. For more information behind the scenes at the American Wood Shop, go to our website for complete details on tips and like us on Facebook. Oh,